So first question right off the bat, let's just hit it with it. Did you ever impersonate the secretary? <laughs> no, no. Uh, what I did do was I had a public service announcement sent out, or a media release uh, sent out by uh, one of the city employees uh, that did mistakenly attribute to the city secretary. That was my mistake. I owned up to it. In fact, I owned up to it in an email to the city manager on the 1st of July and told him that I should have either listed him or the assistant city manager as the uh, sender, so to speak. So when, when, when you, whenever that happened and, and then you did, you, see, you, you, you fessed up, you said, you know, maybe yeah. I should have done it that way, but what, what were some of the things that, you, that made, you, made you go ahead and do that, and some of the complaints that you had with that? Uh, or just some of the things that made you feel like it needed to go out? Well, I've always been a, a champion of government transparency. And when government's handling its business behind closed doors or not informing the citizens, the natural tendency of the citizens is to say they're hiding something. And I never want Big Spring City government to be looked at as if we're trying to hide something, because we're not. So on that day, uh, the 25th of June, when the recall affidavit was filed on Councilmember Stranny and Councilmember DePaul, uh, I went and had a discussion with the city secretary. Uh, and he subsequently called down the city attorney and the assistant city secretary. And we were discussing how the recall process was handled in 2006 with regards to the recall of multiple officers because I was actually involved in that one in 2006 as an activist. So we're discussing this and at about 15 till 5, I think the recall petitions were actually filed around 2.30 or 3 and about 15 till 5 we're kind of, the, the, the discussion is breaking up and I ask the question, so, what are we putting out to the media? Oh, well, and the response I got was, well, I haven't contacted anybody. So, you haven't, and the city secretary, you haven't talked to anyone about this? He's like, well, I called Jim DePaul. Well, what about your supervisors, the assistant city manager, the city manager? Oh, no which is actually part of our administrative directives. So knowing that this would hit social media at any time, I felt it was important for the city to make a statement, not take a side either way, but just to state the facts that, a re that recall petitions had been requested and issued. So I had a city employee write the memo uh, and send it out attributing it to the city secretary. Now the reason I attributed it to the city secretary is because it's the city secretary's office that handles all of the political filings. Right. Now, like I said, should I have shown that as coming from the city secretary? Probably not. Uh, probably should have listed it as the city manager or even myself as mayor. Uh, but anyway, like I said, the intent was never to mislead, defraud, anything like that. The intent was simple transparency. So there was an affidavit filed for them and there wasn't a notice sent out immediately. Yourself, someone who has had a uh, recall petition certified against yourself, sure. was, that, was that sent out immediately once they learned that your, uh, an affidavit had been filed against you? Was that released to the media immediately? Uh, no. no, because the city attorney came out with an opinion, I believe, the following day that the city should not issue, make any statements at all. Now, I disagree with that. I think the city can and should make factual statements. Uh, and I'm not opposed to the city, you know, in my case with the recall. I had no problem, I would have no problem at all with the city stating very simply that 
a, an affidavit for a recall petition has been filed and petitions have been issued. It's the truth. Right. What's wrong with it? Uh, with the recall petition coming up for you, um, mm -hmm. We, there's been a lot of allegations on certain certain issues that maybe have come up, maybe uh, belittling city employees or, or or you know yelling, cussing, things of that sort. What do you what do you say to those to those allegations? Well, and one of my colleagues on the council went on the media and said that I yelled and screamed at a city employee for an hour and a half, which is laughable. I'm a smoker. If I tried yelling and screaming at anybody for more than five minutes, I'd keel over dead. <laughs> so, no. Uh, have I had some heated discussions with city uh, employees on occasion? Yeah. Want to know what really heats me up? Having an employee lie to me. Uh, and especially when I've asked a question that I already know the answer to. Um, and in this, the instance that she's referring to, uh, I had been asking the city attorney questions via email for two solid weeks and could not get a straight answer out of the man. And finally pinned him down in a staff meeting and he looked me in the eye and lied to me. Now he works directly for the council. Yeah, so I raised my voice, I didn't yell. Mm -hmm. Do you feel but, like your position as a mayor uh, kind of gives you that opportunity or maybe kind of even gives you that right to, to critique, even, even hard critique, some of these city employees? Have you ever been hard critiqued on a job? Oh, of course. Sure. I'm, I'm a reporter every day on San Angelo exactly. Live's Facebook. Exactly. Well, yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. What's my job? Oversight. Yep. Oversight of the, bu the bureaucracy. And so the things I look for, uh, number one, is somebody doing their job. Number two, is somebody abusing their office. And so you know, if I see problems with that, or if I see problems with a message that somebody's putting out, then yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll talk to folks about that. Whenever you were running for uh, Big Springs, you, you you promised a few things there, uh, and and with a recall election, it's it's really like you said earlier in a Facebook post, um, it's more of a job review. You you're sure. you're treating it more as a job review than Absolutely. you're not taking it personally, like they're coming and attacking you. Yeah. So do you think those those promises that you made and those things that you were bringing in to say that I'm coming in here to be the mayor doing this? Do you think that the citizens of Big Spring are gonna see that and see the things that you've done or are, are or do you think that well, it'll be more hearsay so. that, that, that are going to take I mean, the election? Yeah. I'm on Facebook engaging with the citizens every day. My phone number is on the city website. It's on my Facebook page. It's on every email I send out. Any citizen can call my cell phone. Uh, I field phone calls from citizens almost every day on everything from water issues, water quality issues, potholes, to people wondering if uh, an estranged spouse who's not social distancing should be allowed visitation. Though, like I said, it runs the gamut. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, no other council member puts themselves out like that. You call me, I'll answer the phone. If it goes to voicemail, I'll call you back. Do you feel like that, that way of you living your life and that way of you being so open, do you think that's going to help you uh, in this recall election? It, it can't hurt. I said, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to gain. I'm not doing this job because I'm trying to line my own pockets. Uh, trust me, the number of hours I put in, uh, turns that three hundred dollars a month to about forty cents an hour. <laughs> so you know, I'm in City Hall every day. I'm working for the citizens every day, um, and even when I'm doing other work, I'm still looking for opportunities to 
make things better for the city of Bigsburg. And just last question. I'm just going to give you sure. an opportunity just to, mm -hmm. just to just say whatever you want. Say just just kind of give give the message mm -hmm. to the people about what's kind of been going on, what what you think is is real, and what's what's right. to expect in the future. Well, and my message has not changed since I ran first started running for this office. I had five things I was concentrating on, and we've hit all those. Transparency. I'm the most transparent mayor the city of Big Springs ever seen. The most accessible uh, and the most responsive. Uh, I, myself, brought public comment back to the meetings before the state of Texas mandated it. Uh, we've done more on infrastructure, water, and streets than has ever been done before since I came into office. We have greatly increased our staffing at the fire department, especially to the point that it's looking like our ISO uh, safety rating is going to rise to a three from a four, which is good news for all the citizens because that means their homeowner's insurance is going to go down. Fifth, or the fourth thing, attracting new business. I'm talking to business opportunities every day, uh, trying to get them to locate in Big Spring and you know, help grow Big Spring's businesses, try to bring more events to Big Spring, and like I said, generate more revenue for the city. And number five, we have uh, held the line on taxes this year. Uh, and we have actually cut our expenses by over $4 million. And so when COVID, the new world comes out, when COVID is no longer a, a fear, and businesses reopen 100%, and revenues start to come back, we're going to hold the line on those expenses and keep driving that tax rate down. So, I've done my best to keep every campaign promise I've made. And then a couple along the way uh, that weren't in my full out platform, uh, you know, pushing constitutional issues, pushing conservative issues, because Big Spring Howard County is a conservative city. Uh, I've championed Second Amendment rights, I led the fight on the city of Big Spring becoming a safe haven for the unborn and keeping abortion clinics from locating in Big Spring. And one thing that makes my wife very proud of me is that we've gotten our animal shelter to no-kill status. We have not killed any dogs for space in the last year in our animal shelter, which my predecessor said could have made done. Here it is. A lot of people are saying 0% property tax rate can't be done. Neither could a no-kill shelter. We got that. So it's just something we have to work on. We have to change our attitudes, attitudes and ideals. And think, look at it from a different direction and think outside the box.